In this video, we're going to do example 7.3.1b. We had done part A in a previous video, as well as looking at the de definition of linear dependence and independence. Let's revisit that definition quickly now. A collection of vectors v1 through vk and rn is called linearly dependent if the dependence equation has non-zero solutions. Remember that the coefficients are the unknowns of this equation. A writing of the dependence equation with non-zero coefficients is called a dependence relation for the vectors. The collection of vectors is called linearly independent if it is not linearly dependent. Example 7.3.1 had asked us in each of the cases to below to determine if the collection of vectors is linearly dependent or independent, and if the collection is dependent to give a dependence relation. We did A in a previous video. Let's go and do B. So to determine whether a set of vectors is linearly dependent or independent, we always need to examine the dependence relation, the dependence equation for the set. So that's the equation a1v1 plus a2v2 plus a3v3 equals 0. And if this equation has non-zero solutions, then the set will be linearly dependent. And if there is only the zero solution, our set will be linearly independent. To determine the number of solutions, we need to look at the equivalent homogeneous system. So let's go and prepare that homogeneous system now. We write out the components of the vectors. We'll notice like we did in part A, that the zero vector, of course, has only zero entries, and so our system is going to be a homogeneous linear system. So a1 plus 2a2 minus 4a3 equals 0 minus a1 minus a2 plus a3 is equal to 0, and a1 minus a2 plus 5a3 is equal to 0. This linear system, of course, can be analyzed its number of solutions by reducing its augmented matrix into an echelon form. So if we do that, obviously through many steps, we will get an echelon form, a reduced row echelon form, in fact, that looks like this. We can see that we have a free variable. The system is consistent, it's homogeneous, and therefore we have infinitely many solutions. If there's infinitely many solutions, then necessarily there must be non-zero solutions. If there are non-zero solutions to this system, there are non-zero solutions to the dependence equation. Therefore the collection of vectors is linearly dependent. Now we were also asked to give a dependence relation, which means that we have to write down one particular non-zero solution of this vector equation, of this dependence equation. So let's write down the full system, the full solution to the linear system. A3 is free. So we are going to let a3 be t for any t in R. We will then have that a1 is minus 2t, a2 is 3t, and a3 is t for any t in R. There is the full solution to the linear system, which means that we can rewrite the dependence equation as a1 v1 so minus 2t v1 plus a2 v2, so 3t v2 plus a3 v3, so t times v3 equal to 0. Any non-zero choice of t will yield 
a dependence relation. So we're choosing a particular solution to the homogeneous system. T equals 1 is as good a choice as any. So minus 2 V1 plus 3 V2 plus V3 equals 0 is a dependence relation. For the set v1, v2, v3. So the answer to our problem, the vector, the collection of vectors is linearly dependent and here is a dependence relationship for them.